Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Brimstone Plays Jurassic Park 2. The chaos continues for the Super NES. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it, guys? Yeah, I'd like to apologize about that. Uh, work's been kind of hectic for me. Uh, and the last video I did seemed kind of rushed, and as such, the quality was lower than I would like. So I decided to take the time to give you guys a better quality video, since that's what you guys want and rightfully deserve. So anywho, let me go ahead and explain the plot of this game now, which will mean me explaining some of the events that take place during the book slash movie Jurassic Park. Uh, for those who know, John Hammond, who's in charge of Engine, uh, decides to build a theme park filled with dinosaurs aptly named Jurassic Park. Uh, it's located on an island off the coast of South America. His investors uh, begin to get leery after some uh, incidents that take place with the dinosaurs. Uh, they decide to send in a consultation team to uh, investigate the feasibility of the park. Um, they go in uh, for a guided tour of the place, uh, which the tour is sabotaged by Dennis Nedry, uh, who is a disgruntled employee of Engine. Uh, he was approached earlier by Lewis Dodson, who was a geneticist working for a rival company, Biosyn. Uh, Nedry was instructed to steal valuable dinosaur embryos and basically cause uh, corporate uh, terrorism or sabotage uh, upon, you know, engine and the Jurassic Park itself. Uh, Nedry escapes only to be spit upon and uh, summarily eaten by Dilophosaurus. Uh, the rest of the consultation team, on the other hand, are broke out, broke down in the middle of the park. Uh, all hell breaks loose with the storm and whatnot. Dinosaurs break out, the T-Rex goes on a rampage, and the raptors uh, start having fun and terrorize people. And Wait, that's the wrong raptors! Sorry about that. Let me put on the right rafters. There we go. Never even been to Toronto. Anyway, uh, long story short, some people get eaten. Uh, the rest do escape uh, the island, and that's where the movie ends. However, the game takes place roughly a year after uh, the events. Uh, it turns out that the investors uh, are still interested in the uh, potential that the park has as a theme park and for scientific research. So they actually continue to fund Hammond, uh, who basically takes in the consultation of Dr. Alan Grant and Ellie Sadler, who are the two paleontologists. Uh, by the way, you actually play uh, first character is Dr. Alan Grant, uh, just so to let you know. Um, Basically, with their help, uh, Hammond was able to solve a lot of the problems with the flora and fauna and, you know, make sure the dinosaurs don't get sick and whatnot. And he deemed it time, uh, around a year after the events, to basically send in the team to reactivate uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, now, Biosyn catches wind of this, and their CEO, which... Uh, could be Dodson, but is never mentioned in the uh, plot of this game, uh, who he is. Uh, sends in basically a PMC strike team to basically take the island by force. Uh, you, Alan is asked to go back to the island uh, by a letter request by Hammond, which you will actually see in the instruction manual of the game. Uh, to basically take care of the dinosaur problem, which you find out they have populated the entire island at this point. Uh, he's assisted by a ex-army captain to help uh, take care of the biosyn problem, and that's where the game begins. Everybody got that? Good! See who? That's it with the plot, and I will go ahead and go right to the game now. Yeah, this particular mission, Protect the Galileo Mimus, apparently we found some dead ones, uh, we're investigating what happens, obviously Biosyn did something to him, in this case slaughtered him and is capturing him so we gotta go rescue him and stuff, uh, so yeah, let's get right to that. And we are on Safari, Datari, if anyone remembers that, and shoot the scientists because, uh, that's, you know, it's their own damn fault for trying to play God. Ah, uh, so yeah. This stage is actually a nice change of pace compared to the other ones because it's very straightforward. And we're finding more carbon copies ourselves, and I believe the dark skinned guard is actually the carbon copy of the second player guy, the ex army captain. Um, not really much to say here, you know, on terms of how to go through this stage. Like I said, it's very straightforward. Um, 
Um, you just gotta be very careful of where the enemies are. There's no flamethrowers in this stage, there's just grenade grenadiers and guards pretty much. So, um there's just a mention a couple of things here. Um Gallimimus you obviously do not want to shoot with your rifle because you know that will deplete your little stock number up there. So try not to shoot them. Uh you can just jump over. So yeah, um, just gonna take this time to go over some of the nuances of this game. Some of the plot I didn't go over some of the, you know, nitpicks I have. For example, if you notice, uh, Dr. Grant, who I'm actually playing here, um, in the movie, and even in the Ocean Super Nintendo game, and the, uh, Genesis game that was made by Blue Sky, uh, depicts him as brown, with brown hair and a hat. And he doesn't have either. In fact, he looks more like Ian Malcolm than uh, Grant, but oh well, I can't be too picky on that. Um, one thing I can comment is I love the music in this stage. I, mean, I gotta admit, this game uh, really handles the effect of you know mood, setting mood with music very well. I mean, it sounds like it should be in a movie. Uh, those bulbs you saw were landmines and I just shot a dino, oh well. Uh, the meter will replenish uh, over time. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, the landmines, you really don't want to step on them because, well, they do damage to you. In fact, they do about eight of your health. But the, what makes them really nasty is the fact that if you step on one and you fall on another, that one will explode too. And you can have this chain reaction of death. But yeah. Just going along here. Uh, one thing I got to admit, though, is when I was explaining the plot, keep in mind, this game was made one year before uh, Michael Crichton actually wrote The Lost World. So pretty much Ocean decided to make, you know, made this plot on their own. And the scary thing is, it actually fits. For what's mentioned in the movies, this, you know, fits pretty well. And we got a little cutscene here. <laughs> 